children welcome back again okay in this video we are going to continue the last topic that is adaptation in the plants so in the last topic we have discussed till the uh, adaptation of plants in the desert that is in the dry area so then next we are going to discuss in the different areas i hope you have understood in the last video whatever we have discussed so in this video um we are going to start with the adaptation of the plants that may be the trees and the small plants in the uh, mountains and the hills the area where the mountains and hills the plants are growing then uh, in those um, uh, mountains and hills we know that that is the height maximum height of the uh, uh, land so even on that also in that place also we have, we can see very tall uh, different types of plants or trees can be grown then for example the pine tree and the fir tree so as i told you the mountains and hills they are the height maximum height point of the land so that height point will be like that then uh, there uh, uh, the uh, plants or trees may get the maximum of the sunlight and maximum of the rain also because they are the higher than uh, the uh, normal uh, uh, land so they will get the maximum sunlight also and maximum water amount also because of the rainfall so how they are going to protect or how they have adjusted themselves even though there is a large amount of rain and even though there is a large amount of sunlight see for example pine tree and the fir tree they are like that those leaves are very small needle like they have a short pointed leaves and uh, inside the water will be filled and then those leaves um, will not be uh, affected by the lot of sunlight because inside the water will be filled and those uh, have the shiny uh, structure on their leaf so that the sunlight is going to reflect back even uh, it, during the heavy rainfall as they have the small needle like uh, leaves structure on the leaves or uh, leaves itself or like that small small needle pine like structures will be there pine like structures will be there then those structures will not allow the water to fall on them to stay them stay on them they will just going go on falling down side because that structure is not broad like this so if the area is broad like this the water can come and stay, stay here stagnate here because they have the very pine or needle like structure water comes it may strike there it is going to fall down then this adaptation of leaves is going to help the plants on the mountain and hills so they can evergreen all the 12 years they they can be evergreen all the 12 years because of the adaptation of the leaves because leaves have small leaves will be there and uh, di very different many different parts and those parts are just like a needle okay so this is how the adaptation of the plants is takes place in the mountains and the hills for example pine tree and the fir tree then adaptation of growing plants in the coastal region again in the coastal region means what there will be a very uh, speed wind blow will be there and again very heavy rainfall for example in the coastal region coconut trees are more coconut palm trees are more there then we know that how do the coconut tree structure of the coconut tree is there thick stem long elongated thick stem or strong stem instead of thick i can say a strong stem and flexible stem uh, if the, the uh, there is a force of uh, uh, blowing of wind so the stem of the coconut tree can be uh, it is so flexible so can it can uh, tolerate the speed or the force of the wind and even we can see the leaf of the coconut tree how they are very strip uh, very uh, i mean we, we we may see the number of strips on that isn't it then those strips will not uh, be affected by the again the fast or speed of the wind blow again they are also very flexible they will bend towards the direction of the wind again they will straight 
become straight. So this is how they are going to tolerate because of their straight and long elongated and strong and flexible stem. The tree is going to stand and even their root is also very strong enough to hold the soil in that reason. Then in those reasons because of this ad ad adaptation of that tree the, they are going to be strong even in the very a forcible forceful uh, wind or blow of wind and even in the heavy rainfall also and even you can see the uh, the structure on the leaf of the coconut tree is like a shining very shiny structure it has the shiny layer it has just like a wax it has even though the uh, there is a heavy rainfall the water will come and stand it will not going it is water is not going to stay there only just it will uh, like this uh, roll and it will fall down side because of the waxy uh, nature on the leaf and even if it get the lot of sunlight also it is going to reflect back because it is of soft nature it is of very waxy nature that shining property of that um, leaf will reflect back the sunlight this is how the coast in the coastal area the coconut tree is adjusted itself to that habitat or to that area or to that climate even though there is a heavy rainfall even though there is a heavy uh, forceful of wind blow then also there are we can see number thousands of the coconut trees in the coastal region okay then next one the adaptation of the plants in the marshy areas marshy area means the area where that area is always filled with the water what always watery substance will be there and there the soil will be very sticky and very less amount of air will be there inside the soil then in this uh, area whichever the plants are going to grow those all plants we call them as a mangroves mangroves and the special character of this plant is that their roots after growing some up to some height in the length in the ground they will start growing upside of the water so that they because in the soil they have very less air if they grow upside they can get the air from the climate the roots usually what happens roots will go under the uh, ground no but in this mangroves the roots will grow upside of the water so they they can get sufficient amount of the air for their respiration uh, this is how the adaptation of the plants in the marshy areas. The marshy area means what? Always it will be filled with the water. So there is very less amount of uh, air in the soil. So to get the air and to adopt themselves to grow very well, the roots will start growing upside of the water lake. This is how the marshy areas plants have adopted themselves. Then last and interesting one is aquatic plants aquatic plants means we will uh, <coughs> there will there is a photo which will come in front of our eyes that is lotus lily hydrilla there are some type of plants which are going to grow inside the water inside the water land will be there they are going to grow inside the water those plants are called as the aquatic plants first one is water lily water lily uh, you might have seen water lily plant has a very broad leaves and a big flower that is okay and a very um, long stem which is coming from the ground level of the water to the surface of the water then these leaves always will be floating on the water so that they will get enough sunlight so that sunlight will help that plant or leaf to prepare their, synthesize their own food with the help of the photosynthesis. Then, uh, okay, then uh, uh, hollow and very lightweight stem, long stem will be there. Inside the stem, the air is filled. Inside the stem of the water lily, the air is filled. Then the air will help to uh, for the respiration or breathing of the plant and the leaf, broad leaves, floating leaves will prepare the, its own food. This is how the plant is going to balance itself. This is how the plant is going to adapt itself to the water. Okay. And then next one is hydrilla plant. Hydrilla plant as I told you there are the uh, some variety of plants. For example hydrilla 
as this uh, water lily is half is half is inside and half is upside the flower and the uh, leaf are upside but this hydrilla almost this is submerged in the water this hydrilla plant is not having the broad leaf as the lotus sorry this water lily has this hydrilla is having the uh, the leaf will be the strip of the leaf will be there very long just they just uh, look like a ribbons so they can uh, tolerate the uh, force of the flowing water however the, the water will flow even they are also going to bend that side and again they are they will move to their original place so they will not tear they, the whole plant is not come up pluck out plucked outside and it will flow in the water it will not happen because the roots are also strong enough to hold the soil under the water and the ribbon like structure of the leaf will help the whole plant to tolerate the force of the water and even these leaves will prepare their own food and uh, leaves are going to prepare their own food hydrilla and water lily are two best examples for the aquatic plants i hope you have understood how nicely they have adjusted adopted themselves to the water okay i hope children you all have uh, understood whatever we have discussed in this whole video and uh, if you not understood please see the video again and again try to read out the textbook you can you, it is very easy you will come to understand only thing is you have to uh, keep in mind or remember some points the some scientific scientific names and the name of the plants and how exactly they have adjusted for example the pines and the needle like structure and the ribbon like leaves and you can say broad leaves and uh, uh, floating on the water and the hollow stem and the air is filled in the stem so like this the important points you have to write to get the good marks i hope you will do this one and before ending this i would like to give you or some examples you know of what i am going to give the questions um write down how do the um, plants in the mountains and hills have ad adopted themselves you can write down and you can write down the adaptation of the growing plants in coastal regions you can write very brief about the coconut tree and you can write how do the adaptation of growing plants in the aquatic uh, region or uh, write about the aquatic plants so you can write these three questions i hope you will do this one and after writing that read once again practice it because like that questions are only going to come in your examination i hope you will do this one and take care and let us meet in the next video till then take care bye bye